first of all, that you have your stuff that you need to work with and you are not someone who should blame your parents for what they did because they are just living their life because of their experiences and their experiences with their parents if they have any is not their fault so on that seminar i learned to stop blaming whatever my parents had done to me because i understood that they are the result of their experiences in the past. Hey, welcome. There's this wonderful scene in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where Indiana Jones, what we'll to say, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery are talking. And Harrison Ford is confronting his father, Sean Connery, the character on the blip as they're escaping Germany. And Harrison Ford's, if you were a better father, if you were this, if you were this, if you were that. And, and Sean Connery says, I was an excellent father in his Sean Connery voice. And he says, <laughs> he's like, I, I taught you self-reliance. I taught you independence. I taught you these different elephants, these different character traits as they were going through their journey and their their journey as a, well, as a father-son combo. And we were just talking about your relationship with your father. And for the feel-good fathers out there, I would love to hear, number one, if you could say a little bit about your father and then about what lessons you took from him and how that's applied to your current family. Of course. First of all, let me say thank you for inviting me to your podcast. I am honored to be here. I have, I still have my uh, great father. He's a deacon in the Catholic Church. He was ordered when I was seven years old in 1977. Um, so that has been a very strong bringing him in my life i still go to church i'm catholic and mm -hmm. and, uh, and i practice every week and i live by by christianity i try to we're never perfect but sure. i try he had many businesses my hunger for business comes from him mm. but he never was i shouldn't say never he was not persistent in businesses. The okay. only thing he did for a very long time was a food truck that he had for 14 years, which made him good money. We had a very decent life, middle-class family. Mm -hmm. And my father, it's a very humble, simple guy very religious, too religious to my taste. I'll say almost a fan of mm -hmm. a fanatic. Uh, what a good human being. And my love for God comes from him, his teachings. Got it. Right. And uh, my spiritual journey also has to do a lot with that feeling of feeling God and having a great life and feeling the, his love. And that was teach by my father. That was that was teach by my father. And he's the great Christian, a guy who loves humanity. My father sees someone in the street, he'll stop mm. and ask if they want food. This kind of human, right? Sure. Cook for the priest for church and cook for the elderly people and whoever needs help, if he can, he'll do it. That's my father in, in short. What would you say would be the values that you inherited from your father? God is first. Think in other people first. 
try to live by example. Got so it. to lead by example. Okay. What else? And to be a good human and, and try to imitate what Christ life had. My father is center in in Christianity and everything has to do with that. I'm a little bit more open. I'll say a lot more open than him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't see salvation as only Catholics like he does. Okay. No, that's I, good. I don't believe in that. And I and also and I also think that you don't have to be a Christian to be a great human and a saint or a person who is going to live whatever is going to happen after this life. So I'm very open about that. And I respect every person because I have seen people who don't have the same beliefs that I have that are better humans than I am. Got it. That's a great takeaway. You were sharing with me that there was a change point in your life that there was a, a certain way that you were raised and that had an impact on you until you were roughly 40. And so 40 is a relatively good and average age for a lot of fathers out there. I'd be really interested, and I think our fathers would be really interested in, or in what the journey was, what your life was before, what new decisions did you make and why did you make that? I got married very young, 23 years old with a great woman that I did not love. She was from church, from the choir. We I used to play the guitar in that choir. I still do. And she used to sing in that choir. And she fell in love with me. And I knew she was a great woman. And following my the advice of my father and the pressure of every, everyone else, they saw that the, we were two good people and that we could have a great relationship. And because of that pressure, I got married. Mm. Then I had two kids. And then got divorced probably in the fifth year, something like that. And I hurt her. I hurt her because she did love me very much. And we went through a difficult divorce and then our time raising the kids. One very positive thing happened in our process of getting divorced. And it was that we went to a, how you say, when you go to a place and pray and have these three days. Like a retreat? Um, like a retreat? A retreat. We went yeah. to a retreat that was also a seminar both things it was done by a nun but we learned there that our parents our parents defects or difficulties in their life with our growing up has nothing to do with it has to do a lot with what they lived before and all of our difficulties in life has to do with the experiences we have lived before. Okay. In that retreat, we work with that. And mm. we understood as young parents that the only the best way to avoid traumas in our kids was not to pass on what we had lived before. That concept of the generational lessons, the generational traumas, that is something that all feel good fathers, right? That our father that is listening right now, he suffers from as well. Do you have, or he may be suffering from it. I suffer from it. There, there were decisions that I made in my journey that were separate from the decisions that I saw from my father and my dad. What... If you were to describe a process, you were to describe at a high level, what are two or three things a person could do or that you learned to do to identify those things and then make that next choice? What did you learn at that seminar? First of all, that 
you have your stuff that you need to work with and you are not someone who should blame your parents for what they did because they are just living their life because of their experiences and their experiences with their parents if they have any it's not their fault so on that seminar i learned to stop blaming whatever my parents had done to me because I understood that they are the result of their experiences in the past. What did you replace that blame with? Forgive and love. And in the process, in that seminar, you also forgive yourself. Understanding that you being reacting to what happened to you in the past. And us as fathers do the same thing with our kids unless we are conscious about it to right. not repeat the same thing. So th first of all, forgiveness. And forgiveness is for you. And you have heard this before. Forgiveness is for you. When you forgive, you let the weight down. You don't feel that pressure. And then you start seeing your relationship with your parents completely different. You don't blame them anymore. There's less reaction. And then after that divorce, I was single for 12 years and I was broke, bankrupt, no stability. Had I went through looking for women and having this crazy life and having girlfriends. And I spent that life for 12 years. What was your... What part of your uh, your relationship with your kids did you maintain and your relationship with your wife did you maintain during that period? Since we knew we had the importance of my present and her present, something we did very well is that we did not talk to the kids anything bad to, from the other from the other person. Right. And she respect that. So even though we had fighting courts about money or whatever. She didn't say anything to my kids. And I appreciate that. And I didn't talk bad about her because the truth is she's a great woman. man. And that and my presence in my kid's life, I have never, ever missed a birthday, a first communion, a school activity. Many times I was the one who went to the school meeting with the teachers. I drew to their house, picked them up in the morning and took them to school for four years every morning. So I've been present in their life, which I think is the best and more, most important thing that a father needs to do is to be present. And that has led me to a great relationship with my kids. I have an awesome relationship with my older kids. And now I have a 10 years old from my new marriage. And after 40, my, my 10 years old was born when I was 41. She's going to be 11 in December. I had, I, we had maybe a year and a half married. And I had this, I don't know. This call to, to change and to see life different. I started listening to Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn and my self-development life started in, back in 2008, listening to all these audios and I bought the tapes and I bought the books and I started. And even though I was not consistent on that time, it started. My conscious started to change, you know? What led you to that? What Generally, most people, if we think about the hero's journey, right, they have an everyday life, and then there's a moment, there's something that occurs. What would you say happened that led you to those personal development pieces? What was the impetus? I think it was money. Okay. Pretty sure. Been bankrupt all my life. I've been... I was 
always struggling and always dreaming with making it happen. And then I met my, my, my present wife who has been a 200% supportive of everything I want and I do. And we've been you know, up and down like in, a, in a, any marriage. But for sure, she's been part of my success today and what's happening in my life and all the positive things and meeting you and all these people that I have met in the last years. And and I think that also you, you start being more mature. You get it when your daughter is 14, 13, 15, and she start looking at the boys and you say to yourself, Have I been the best example of the kind of man she should be looking for? And that question hurts when you have taken the wrong decisions the majority of your life. It's painful when you, and I did that question to myself when she was that age. And she said, Daddy, I like a boy in the school. And she was 15. And I, I was cool. And But I started asking myself, if you don't give the example of what kind of man she should have, you'll find the wrong man. So you had this moment, your daughter comes to you, she's got a crush. She's coming to you likely because it's pretty serious. Even I know with my daughter at her age, it's like I hear about the crushes, but they, they don't ever hit my ears yet. <laughs> right? So. It's a mummy daughter thing right now. Right. So this happens and you ask yourself, Hey, have I been the best example? Now we can't, we're, we can't change the past, right? As you mentioned before, we can forgive ourselves. We can move on. We can create something new. What did you create after you heard that? What did you, was this that moment in 2008 when you started doing the Tony Robbins, this 15 year old doing that was that sort of the moment for you no in 2008 she was younger i had already started my 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 journey to self-development the first thing i did in 2008 was to purchase a gym run seminar mm -hmm. i saw it online it cost 299 dollars i had the money in the bank and i said you know what i'm gonna buy it yep And it was the best thing I did. Now, I was not consistent with what I read and what I learned. So it was a process. It took me many years. But with that knowledge in, my, in the back of my head and the life that I was having, I have jobs. And, and it was not that I, like we were not having a place to sleep. But I was, knowing, I was not doing the best I could do. And losing my time and looking busy when you are not productive and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff that we do. And that moment and many other moments in life, but I am a very open and sincere father with my kids. They know when I have screw up and I don't deny, I don't try to be a perfect dad. I am not, but, and I think They, they appreciate that I'm honest because mm. they'll do their mistake. And that's for sure, but it has taken me to a different place. Today, I'm 52, a lot more mature and a lot more decisive about what I need to do. So now, if I can do it, I'll reach to someone to help me. I ask for help. I look for the money. I, I do the stuff that I have to do. And I have learned to be uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And that process ha has helped me a lot. So love it. I think this is a great lesson in learning in general for any feel-good father that wants to hit the next level being uncomfortable and just doing the thing that needs to be done, paying attention to 
what you're doing, what you want to create in the world, and just executing on it. Just taking that first step is sometimes all you need to start that little snowball that becomes the avalanche in this new direction in your right. life. So I want to go back to this moment where you said, am I being the best example for my daughter? Is she going to find, is this health that I've created or this unhealth, is that going to springboard her to the next stage? So what was the, let's talk just a little bit. What specifically did you create new after this moment? How did well, you show I up? I decided to be a better husband to start with. Okay. Be more present with, with the wife. Stop drinking outside. I used to work in events. I did that for 11 years. Alcohol was always present. Men, models, working in event concerts and music. And, and I'm a musician, so I enjoy that. I love music and I love the partying and all that. But it was out of control. In a point, I was working pretty much seven days a week because I had an event pretty much every day with my with a company that I used to work. And, and I was drinking probably four days of the week, five. Not one drink, but four or five. Mm -hmm. Getting home at 2 a.m. And since I was working, I could have this. But the truth was that I could left earlier but i kept with the friends having a right and then i closed the place when i didn't have to I was having fun and i was not putting the family as a priority and i paid the price for that because i made the mistakes many mistakes with the kids and sometimes i charge against them without any real reason, because I'm just defending myself because I say I'm saying that I'm working hard. And it, it was an excuse. Right. And that I change. And when I did Tony Robbins in 2018, I went with my wife, which was a great thing because we speak the same language about growing and reading and listening to audios and all that stuff. And one of the things that I have learned from April, our coach, is that if you had Tony Robbins by your side or someone that you admire, how will you behave? Got it. And just so just and to it's, catch up on the other feel good fathers, that's April Garcia of Pivot Me. You can find her online. But right, so if Tony Robbins is right beside you. What will you do? How will you mm -hmm. behave? If you have to do a contract, if you have to call a customer, if you have to do something and Tony is there, what will you do? Okay. If you're on Facebook and there's a pretty girl and you feel like writing something, a text that you should not write it and Jesus is by your side, would you send the text? So that's, and then it's, the truth is that there's a, a story of this Japanese guy that he's Colombian and Japanese. His father is Japanese and her mom is Colombian. And when he was little, he was born in Colombia and then he moved to Japan and he's walking with his dad. It's around 10 p.m. and the light is red and the father is waiting for the light to be they're going to cross walking the street. So it's a wait until the light is green. And he sees there's no cars. So he's around seven, eight years old. And he says to the dad, daddy, let's walk. There's no cars. He said, no, the light is red. He says, daddy, but nothing, nothing is going to happen. There's no cars here. Let's cross the street. And he said, the light is red. So daddy, but nobody's going to see us. Nobody's watching us. Nobody's going to say anything. And the father looked at him and said, I am watching myself. I don't need no one to tell me what is right and what is wrong. I'll do what is right. And I said to myself, that's the key. I need to be 
proud of myself when I am by myself. Because that's when we go to do the negative stuff that is not going to help us. And that is the true person that is going to show up to your kids, even though you don't realize that. But they do. They are always watching. But when you are clear to yourself, when you feel like you can walk and Jesus is by you, or Tony Robbins is by you, or Mother Teresa, or Gandhi, or whoever it is, if you feel that they can walk by you and be proud of you, that's where your kids see. And that's the example you want to give. It's not about the words. It's about who you are. And wow, that's what I learned. Great. So great. So great. So you, man, we could keep going on this. So yes. how did you, so this is, this is such a great lesson, I think, for each of us to learn. But in addition, I, I got to imagine that this is something that you're bringing to your family. So what are you doing and how are you intending this? How are you creating this in your family? As I said, I try to be as honest as I can be. I think that is key, especially when your kids are teenagers and they have to know that you screw up once in a while, you know, that nobody's perfect. Uh, as parents, I think it's very important that we don't judge the mistake of our kids, that we are supportive, but that we are also disciplined especially in the first year of their lives. Not discipline with violence, but with firm. When you say no, you're not going to change your opinion. You know, that you are clear in the message and that they know that he said this and that is going to happen. If Or mom did, whoever but we're talking about fathers now. If we decide, and, and it has to be in a loving, loving way. This is very important. I'm going to give you a story about my son when he was 16 years old. Okay. He was 15. He's turning 16. His birthday was a Wednesday. On Monday, I got his grades. Now, let me give you a backstory before I keep going. I changed him of school because he hated the other school. And he was he was having terrible grades and all that, doing all the wrong things. And he said, Daddy, please change me to from of school. I hate this school. So I talked with the mom. We agree. We changed him of school. First semester, first grade, October. He's having the same grades. No, that I got the grades on Monday. Wednesday, his birthday. I used to take him every day to school. Every day. I went to their house. They picked them up and I took them and my wife's kids to school every day. And that day, I say to him, son, we are not going to be able to go and get your test the driving test and he opened his eyes why not that so your grades are not they're not good you have d's and f's and c's and it's not enough you're a smart kid you're intelligent you can do a lot better oh but don't that i'm gonna do better and i said listen i will be irresponsible if I give you a car in your hand, because driving a car is a big responsibility. And if I give you a car right now, and you have not proved to me that you're responsible enough to drive it, I'll be, a, I'll be irresponsible with society. Your first responsibility is to be good in school. Do your best. I'm not asking you to have all A's. I'm asking you to do your best. Get better grades, and I'll take you 
to the place to have a your license. So we did that. December comes. Grades are not good. A little better, not good. He promised me he was gonna do better. He was working hard on that. It's that I'm gonna I'm gonna have the license, but I'm not gonna drive. All this kind of trying to negotiate. No. March comes. Grades are better, but not perfect. Not where they should be. May comes. Now you can go and get your license. Now, I didn't scream to him. Of course, I didn't hit him. I didn't scream or make a show about it with love and pain because I didn't. It was painful for me, too. I said, you can have the license. That is discipline with love. Got it. And he learned his lesson. Today he's 27 and he's a grown man. And he knows that you have to pay the price for the things that you want. And that's what discipline. If my father were more disciplined with me, I wouldn't have gone so much far sooner. I'm still going far. But I miss life. Tell me, jump into this. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you I drove out of college. I graduated with B from high school. But my father was not involved in any school activities. My father was involved always with church. And as an adult, that was the resentment that I had until I did that seminar that I told you about. Yeah. So he didn't ask me to have good grades. And when I had bad grades, he just punished me and sent me to my room for a week or a month or whatever. He didn't inspire me to be more. He didn't ask me. He didn't, you know, you have to. One of the things that I learned as, a, as an adult is that when you are born, you need someone to push you to learn the things that you have to learn. For an example, no kids want to go to school. Right. You have to make them. Why? Because us as humans avoid the pain. But pain is necessarily to grow. Right? If my father had done that with me when I was young, and obviously he didn't know any better, it's not his fault either, I will probably have finished the school, college, Maybe do a master's degree or become a lawyer or whatever I wanted to. I had the intelligence. If I were, if I had discipline, I was probably being able to be more disciplined in my life mm. and have different results. That's why I've been disciplined with my kids. Loving as much as I can. Kisses. I love you every day. And I still tell to my son who's 27, he's 10, 28 now in October. I love you all the time. I love you. Come with me. I'm here for you. If you need me, I'm here. And discipline, it's a, I think, I think that there's no way you can love someone with, without discipline. How? When you love somebody, you want what is the best for them. And actually, it has to do a lot with yourself. If you love yourself, you discipline yourself. Mm. Because mm. If, you're, if you're a lazy person in bed, eating and drinking and doing drugs and all that, you're not loving yourself. You're killing yourself. But if you want to be the best version of yourself, it requires discipline. Now, 
Ed Milet says that he sees he he sees the encounter with God as a finding out what was the best version of yourself that God decided that God designed for you. And that no one want, no one knows what is that. And that is why you have to do your best to make God proud. Kind of this, you know, this. If you love yourself, you discipline yourself. And you will feel better with yourself. And I am a, a big testament of that. I feel great when I do the things that I have to do. And that's where I'm at, where I'm out, where I'm at today. I am feeling good with myself. I'm I feel good with who I am when I am by myself. I don't the pressure of someone looking at me and seeing, look at how he speaks. I don't need that anymore. And that is a great life. I go to my bed with my clean conscience, I talk less, I do more. And I have learned that I will impact the life of others and the ones around me if my actions are in agreement with the things that I say. How do you, how have you transferred and taught that to your children? With honesty, with being honest, with love, for sure, with presence, especially in the bad times when they screw up, when, when they're younger, calling it the way it is. I don't put I don't put mask to things. I don't cover up the truth. I'll say it the way I think that I should say it. And, uh, and I correct them when I think I have to. It doesn't matter what age they are. But I have learned to do that with respect. First of all, we need to respect them. Today, they are, they are adults, the first two. I will respect their decision if I don't agree, but I will let them know that I am not, I don't agree with them. Respect that. Mm -hmm. And that, you know what, the at the end, that I, I don't care if they love me back or not. I will keep loving them. Because love is only one way and it's out is to give. It will somehow come back. Maybe not from the same people. But we sh when when you love somebody like your kids, I don't expect anything from them. But I get the best of them. Right. Man, love is, love is the key. Giving them and being honest with them and using your experiences and your screw-ups. I did this and I did that and you should not do that because I did this and you should not do that because I did this other thing and I went to jail because I didn't pay the child support. I was... When I talk about finances... This is my screw ups. And I was, I don't know, 30 something when I was in bankrupt. I have done through the things you should use your experiences to teach your kids too. And I'm right. honest with them. Right. They know this. Because we are our story. That's that's awesome. I love the being intentional. I love the discipline and love. I really like the that concept, that idea, the transparency, the the honesty of your experience and applying that to them in your lessons. 
And I really think that concept of forgiving and loving on your parents for, and probably, and above that of the generations before you and saying, Hey, you guys were doing the best that you could with what you did. And saying like, all right, I love you guys for that. And then forgiving yourself for any blame or shame that you put on yourself for those things and choosing a different direction. These are all really great lessons to learn for our FG father out there. Chris, you know, I, oh, go ahead. I want to say that for the, I had, I still have my parents and I still have a great relationship with them. But there's a lot of men who has lived with our father. Yes. Or a bad father. A violent father who punch him. And you hear these stories about, and many times, if that person does not decide to stop that, they'll pass that on to their kids. And they have the power. And I think what we've been talking about today is that they have the power to make that choice. You've always got a choice to pick something different. And forgiveness is for them and for their kids. Yes. It is important that we forgive our past so we don't pass it on in the future. That's right. So if any father there who's watching this podcast is going through not being the best version of themselves for their kids, forget, forgive your past. Make peace with it. And decide who you want to be in the future. Because it does not matter if your kid has seen the worst of you. They will appreciate the future of you. Spot on. Chris, if folks want to get to know you, if they want to follow up with you or learn about you and what you're up to, give us a little rundown of that. And we'll we'll put it in the show notes too. Um, you mean what, what I do in Puerto yeah, Rico? That? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. I live in Puerto Rico. I was born in New York City, in Manhattan, but I was raised in Puerto Rico. My father, father my parents are Puerto Ricans, so I was raised here. Today, uh, I am a real estate entrepreneur and business broker. Love what I do. I have changed completely my life professionally and spiritually and everything else. And, and if there's anything I can do for anyone, especially parents and whoever wants to talk to me about how to do something better for their kids, I'm not a perfect guy, but I have lived my life and there's some good experiences that I can pass on. You can reach me. My Reaching. email is oh go ahead. Go my email. I mean, you want to give my information? What's your website? Yeah. It's riverachris.com. Riverachris.com. R I V E R A Chris.com. Got it. It'll be in the show notes. Wonderful. Chris, thank you so much. I think you've added a lot of great value. And I'm looking forward to speaking to you soon. Yeah. Have a year, friend. You know that. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, feel good fathers. Hit that like button to let YouTube know that you liked this video. Comment below with your thoughts and reactions to this interview. I really want to hear what you have to say. Now, as a personal brand strategist, I hear all the time about coaches, trainers, speakers, and authors doing the right thing, but at the wrong time. We specialize in helping brand builders have more impact more credibility and clarity and developing an overall brand strategy. When you work with Brand Builders Group, we'll help you do the right thing at the right time. Request a free brand call below. There's a link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe. You'll get updates when the new episodes are launched and it really helps out the community and the channel. We'll see you next time.